What's up guys, I'm Sean. Today we're going to be installing this Bemo World rear trailing arm bushing on my E46 M3. The rear trailing arm bushing controls toe. Toe is when the front of the wheels points in or out. On a rear wheel drive car, you want a little bit of toe in, which provides more rear end stability. The stock style rear trailing arm bushing allows for a lot of deflection under load so your toe can actually change which makes the rear end unstable. This rear trailing arm bushing has a spherical bearing which allows the arm to fully articulate which controls the slop and eliminates toe migration making the rear end more stable. So here's the rear suspension and here is where the rear trailing arm bushing is. We want to trace around the housing so we can keep our toe very similar to what it is before we head to the shop and get alignment. Remove these three bolts with 18. So here's the upgraded PowerFlex bushing that I have. I just loosened the rear shock bolt to give us a little bit more room. And now we have to loosen that main through bolt with a 18 on both sides. I'm gonna try to break it loose. There's a sensor wire that you just move out of this clip to give you a little bit more room. And now we just have to pull off the bolt. Okay, move this bracket that holds the bushing in place. This bracket's off. And this is the way it goes back into the car. So this PowerFlex bushing is a two-piece bushing, so it's actually really easy to take off. I can just push off that pin and the bushing comes out. If you have an OEM bushing, you probably want to rent a rear trailing arm bushing tool online or from AutoZone. What I do is actually I use that tool and I also use a Sawzall and I actually cut, cut the OEM bushing and pulled it out that way. So you gotta get creative on how you take out the OEM bushing. I'm just gonna use half inch drive and try to knock out that pin. Pin comes out. I don't wanna mess up the PowerFlex bushing so I just tapped it out with a hammer and it comes right out. Here's the PowerFlex poly bushing which has been great so far but now I'm looking for the upgrade the Bimmer World unit comes with instructions so their rear trailing arm bushing is two pieces you remove the three allen keys pull that off and now we're gonna install this so it goes this way the lip is on the outside and then we're gonna push it into there so I put a little bit of grease on the outside of this you're trailing on bushing before we slide it in into this part. So I got this for trying to press in the new rear trailing arm bushing, but it looks like you actually need a tool to press it in. So we're gonna head to the auto store and rent one. All right, here we are at AutoZone. Let's head in. So just reading a couple of tools from AutoZone. The nice thing is that it's completely free. You just leave a deposit and you have 90 days. So now that it's lunchtime, let's head to one of my favorite spots. It's a wonderful day here at Chick fil A. What can I get for you today? Hi, right, can I have the spicy deluxe combo? Okay, and your beverage? Can I have um, Powerade? Anything else? Uh, that's it. Okay, I have you down for 873 at the window. Thank you. My pleasure. Need that Powerade on a hot day. All right, thank you. See ya. I'm gonna have lunch, then get back to work. The ball joint tool might work the best because it's basically like a giant C clamp and it has different fittings. And I have this piece and it has an opening here so it fits flat over the bushing and it pushes on the bushing housing and not the bushing. So you don't want to push on the actual spherical bearing. So this comes with the, the, the ball joint tool. I'm going to put that here. I'm going to set this C clamp up so I can clamp it down. You have to make sure that the bushing is pretty even because if it's skewed, it's not going to go in smoothly. Now we're going to try to tighten down the clamp to press it in. So I'm using a jack to hold the arm up. I have my breaker bar and I have a cheater bar to get more leverage. It's slow and tedious, but it's starting to go in. If you remove the whole control arm and use a shop press, obviously it's a lot easier. But that's actually more work because you have to take off the axle and the rest of the control arm. So this is the best thing to do. 
I think if I had the actual rear trailing arm bushing tool, it would be a lot easier. But because I'm basically using a ball joint press, it makes it, the job a little tougher. Now I put one of the attachments on the ball joint tool. It's like a giant cup. So when I press it through, it gives it room to go through without it hitting the end of this. It's just about flush. That's it, we got it. So the rear trailing arm bushing is fully pressed in. It's nice and flat. So now we're gonna put this cap on. So you tighten down these little screws to five foot pounds, which is basically nothing. And then we're gonna put this back on, install the middle bolt. Torque this bolt to 81 foot pounds. Now we're gonna lift the arm up back into the chassis. You start reinstalling the clips for the it was ABS sensor, I guess. I move this back up to the car. Where we marked it earlier. We're gonna try to line that up to get it closed. Reinstall the three bolts. Torque the rear trailing arm bushing bracket to 57 foot pounds. So this side is pretty much done. So when you take it to get an alignment, the alignment shop hooks up the car to a machine and when they loosen the three bolts over here, they can move this arm in and out to get positive or negative toe. So this side is done. I just gotta put the suspension back on and head over to the other side. Everything done. I'm going to Laguna Seca in a couple weeks. Can't wait to try out these new rear trailing arm bushings along with some other changes I've made. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.